High Sugar Scapers, I'm Michelle Gale and I'm here to talk about my new book which is called Pride and Premiership. Hi Michelle Gale. Yes. Are you excited about the release of your first book? Very excited about the release of my book. I mean it's out on mobile phones first which is um, like pioneering for young adult books so it's out on mobile phones now and it comes out in the shops on the 5th of May. And you've done all sorts of things in your career, acting, singing, presenting. Why did you decide to turn to writing? Um, I kind of always wanted to write a book. And they do say everyone's got a book in them. And um, I got this idea because I was doing a, a show in Edinburgh, a, a, a debate about celebrity. And I was told that two thirds of girls had said that year in their careers advice meeting that they wanted to be a wag. And I thought, oh my God, you know. I was married to a premiership footballer or just getting divorced from one and I just thought wow I, I never realised all these girls kind of want to do something that I've done and in that sense you know I could imagine them wanting to sing and, and act but I never imagined they'd want to look up to someone just because they married a footballer so it made me really think about it and, that, and that's kind of what instigated the book. Okay because you did lots of workshops with teen girls didn't you that kind of helped the writing process and things. Yeah, I did a lot of workshops with teen girls up and down the country from Roncorn down to Croydon in Surrey and everywhere in between really. I think we even went to Southampton as well, even more south. And it was important to get the sense that we were on the right subject and using the right language because I, I found that um, what, the people I was working with at the reading agency felt that a lot of books have a certain language that excludes a lot of girls and it's about subject matters that exclude a lot of girls and I wanted to do a, a subject matter that included everybody and so it was really interesting working with girls up and down the country and getting their input and realising how much they were into the subject and the words being used and the style of the writing. Yeah, because the writing is just spot on I think. Oh good, I'm, I'm glad you like it. We worked, sport. it was really, that was the hardest work was getting the writing because I'm surrounded all my cousins you know, I'm friends with all my cousins, and so we speak a lot, and I, I know street slang really, really well, but it's not about street slang, it's about how they would write their own diary, and, and because I'm Facebook friends with them, I get a sense of, like, how they, the rhythm that they write, and the things that yeah. they're willing to say, and, and so I, I just wanted to get that really authentic. And feel. was it Teen Girls that kind of gave you the idea to bring the book out on mobile phones. Yeah, it was actually working with those teen girls is what made me have the idea to do it on mobile phones because we actually did a lot of the work reading off a mobile phone. And in fact, it's such a big craze in Japan um, that I thought, well, it's got yeah. to come here at some stage, you know. And it makes, seems to make sense. Everyone's starting to get smartphones and iPhones and it just seemed to make sense that instead of having to read a whole book, which can be a chore to a lot of people, you could just get it in episodes and catch up and, and want to read the next bit rather than go, oh no, how much more have I got left to read? You know, yeah. it can be a bit boring, can't it? When you see nice a nice way book. of getting it out. Yeah, nice way of being it's... snappy and not making people think, oh, it's too long. Yeah. So it was the statistic about two-thirds of girls wanting, and you've talked about it, wanting to... Uh, become wags as their sort yeah. of career mm. and you've been married to a footballer yourself mm. was it a kind of you wanted to show the reality of what wagdom is like well i knew as someone who's been married to a footballer that unlike most authors of books i can write from from the truth yeah you know from the position of truth you know not trying to be high and mighty but most authors have not been married to a premiership footballer who writes books about being a wag so a lot of what they write will not be authentic just by that the virtue of that fact so I wanted to let girls know I've done it been there done that and so I can give you a, a much more realistic view of, of that job another really girls sort of you know like Paris in the book mm. who's quite extreme are there yeah, really girls is. like that in the world there are some wax? really just in life you know you've gone to the hairdresser or, or to a beauty shop there are some girls who are just extreme in life I think the only way is Essex and I started writing it before the only way is Essex and I even say when she moves to Essex it's like a different country to her the way that some of those girls are and, um, and the only way in Essex has opened up a lot of people's eyes but there are extreme people in every aspect of life and there are some very extreme wags who are very concerned with how they look and spending loads of money and then there are some wags who are really quiet and low-key 
and kind of just want to get on with it, looking after their family. So there's a balance, you know, between yeah. the two. And that kind of idea that you have to accept maybe if you're dating a footballer they might cheat on you, is that mm. was that really the way it was? Or was it I've heard a lot of conversations where they it's not that they say they accept it, but they accept the presence to, to, to make up, if you know what I mean. So they they they're angry at one point, but the other point is is that they're very unwilling to let another woman get their lifestyle. Yeah. So it's not just about you know, I want to be a wag. It's much more about, well, why should I let some other woman take what I've worked, you know, 10 years to keep, or I've been with this guy for 10 years, why well, should I let another girl who just wants to marry a footballer get him? So I think a lot of it is digging in deep and going, I'm not going to let these girls spoil my life. And and it's a bit warped, but that's definitely the, the feeling. Yeah. It's much more about them and us, and they want to be in our position, and that's what they convince themselves of. And did you see lots of instances of girls putting their ambitions, you know, to the side to make way for their, you know, because that happens in the book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a lot, a lot of um, girls that marry footballers, you don't, it's very hard to balance the two things because your footballer finishes training at one o'clock, and he wants attention or he wants to know where you are or he wants to, you know, and what you're going to do, you're going to go, well, I'm at work till five, I'll be home at six. So that's five hours where he's like twiddling his thumb. So, so invariably, you end up giving your, up your job, a lot of women. And then those that don't, like your famous ones like Cheryl Cole, it can lead to problems mm -hmm. because she's away so much and when he's at home, He'll be bored. There's only, you know, they'll play PlayStation a lot, but, you know, there's only so much they can do. Kind of typical man. Right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's only so much they can do on their own. And so you usually weigh it up and a lot of girls think, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll give up work. I don't need to work financially, so we'll give up working. OK. The main character, Remy, gets quite seduced by the glamour of mm, she does. the wag lifestyle. Did you find yourself seduced at the time? Was it just something that you didn't? have in common with her. The thing about the wag lifestyle was that because I'd kind of seen glamour in another way, because I'd been singing and acting and I'd been to LA and I'd been, you know, I'd travelled the world by the time I'd met my ex-husband. So it's really quite hard to impress. I was quite hard to impress with. <laughs> it's good. Like, oh, you're not even impressed. <laughs> you know, I was quite hard to impress because I'd seen a lot of stuff. And that was quite handy for me because it meant that I didn't just fall for it and go, oh, isn't this wonderful? You're so lucky. So, um, in a lot of ways, I didn't really fall for the whole wag thing. And I did think, especially some of the women, I felt a bit sorry for them because some of them were so concerned with image and you know I remember a footballer saying you know quite a famous one saying I would like to phone her and ask her what she's done for the day and have it not be well I did my hair and my nails and my my pedicure you know so even the footballer thought that she'd like to just have a conversation about something other than you know I'd like you to have done something else for your day yeah. you know so I did feel sorry for them because I knew I always had something else my own career you know 